extended for two years. Congratulations. How do I get that? Signed, Oral Roberts. <laughs> Well, it's St. Patty's Day, right? Sure, and I don't mind if I do. <laughs> Was that supposed to be a leprechaun or what? That's well, the guy I bought it from down on Melrose. <laughs> what was I talking about? Anything important? Oh, my, I talking about, you know, the new contract with NBC? Yeah. Good deal. I got a few new perks you don't know about. Oh, yeah? I asked my new hot tub attendant, Fawn Hall. <laughs> Anyway, happy St. Patrick's Day. Yeah. Are we got a little green on today? Yeah. yeah. First guy I saw this morning was Ed, and I said, Happy St. Patrick's Day. I said, Nice green shoes you've got on. And he said, They're not green. A leprechaun barfed on me. <laughs> Ed and I have known each other, what, 30? Yeah. Some years? Yeah. He prepares. Only person I know who prepares for St. Patrick's Day. His liver has been working out... <laughs> on a Nautilus machine for two weeks at Holiday Spa. <laughs> it does not have to be St. Patrick's Day for Ed to have a drink. Ed will drink. He once drank the coleslaw. <laughs> Are you, you wearing the green tie? Yes, sir. All right. Yep. That's it. I got, does, this, does this show up as green? Sure. A little, little green in here. I'm also wearing a, my Irish cologne. Eau de corned beef and cabbage. <laughs> What is the saying that on St. Patrick's Day, everyone... Everyone is an Irishman. Everyone is an Irishman. All day today, Sylvester Stallone was walking around going, Yo, Bigora. (laughs) (laughs) Somehow in Beverly Hills, St. Patrick's Day doesn't make it. They They have their own toast in Beverly Hills. Have you heard it? May the mink be always at your back. (laughs) And may the ground rise up to meet your Porsche. (laughs) Doesn't make it. What else is happening? Did you, this is sensational, did you read about Barbara Walters in the paper today? Yeah. Yeah, Barbara Walters apparently passed some top secret messages to Reagan from an Iranian arms dealer in Iran. She called him and said, Mr. President. (laughs) Barbara Walters carrying government secrets? Next thing you know, they'll find microfilm under Willard Scott's toupee. (laughs) What else is going on? We have a new contender, new uh, for president, Governor Michael Dukakis, I believe. Really? Announce his candidacy for the president? That could split the sport for Bruce Babbitt, though. <laughs> Didn't you know Bruce Babbitt is running? <laughs> Babbitt and Dukakis, weren't they a comedy team on radio in the 40s? Something like that? <laughs> no, Michael Dukakis is 53 years old. He's attractive, intelligent, experienced. Now, the only thing working against him, why a guy who has all that would want to be president? <laughs> is there a joke there anywhere? <laughs> Did you hear the news? How many of you fellows' hair is receding? Or is getting bald? Did you read that the FDA today approved a drug that apparently will help you alleviate baldness? Oh, what's the name of it? I can't remember the name. My- Mitoxin or something like that? Minoxidil. Yeah, they say they, have, they can sell it, but they have to have a provision not to expect miracles. In fact, the Surgeon General is making put on the bottle, suggests you hold off buying a comb. <laughs> okay. Good night. Good night. We're gonna, we have a few Irish toasts to uh, do for you. We have Mr. Tim Conaway, one of the funniest people. A gentleman who was uh, one of the big reasons the show was such a hit, Night Court, Mr. Harry Anderson, is here tonight. <laughs> marvelous, marvelous jazz singer, Diane Shore. Yeah. Is with you stay where you are. We'll be here. Hi, thank you. 
Now, how many people have uh, Irish descendants here in the audience? Yeah. Probably 80, 85 percent. Yeah. I've never been able to trace it. Mine. You are, what, full-blooded? No, no, no. McMahon, of course, is, but my mother was German and English, so oh. I'm half. Yay! But you but you're covered part. everything. Yeah, my father was very I'm Irish. All in it. I can't find any His Irish parents blood. were from Ireland. They came over in the potato famine, so that's... Who came on a potato? No, on the potato famine, when they had the famine. Oh, yes, I... They came over here from Ireland. All right. Do you know what? We have some green beer here. Hmm. This is for St. Patrick's Day. And we're going we're to do some, some, some old toasts here. We made a list of some of the toasts. Some of them you probably know. Maybe you don't. Do you know what good health is in Ireland? The word? Somebody. Who said that? You're right, Slauncha. Slauncha. Did you know that? No. Well, why didn't you know that? that well... Your mother was Irish? Slauncha. Slauncha. All right. Is this drinkable? Yes, sir. We'll find out in a minute. Do you know, for example, you cannot show people drinking beer during a commercial? No. Have you ever noticed All that? the years I've worked with that certain beer company, I could never, ever be seen sipping the beer. You could, we can do it here on the show right. because this is not a commercial, and this is what you call a dramatic license. Or they can do it... But if you watch a sitcom, you watch a western, they can drink. But once you do a commercial and the guy pours it out and they do that, they cut and you see the thing. Isn't that the most ridiculous thing you've ever seen? Anyway, you know this one here? Do you know this? Made the see, road. you're not supposed to. <laughs> let me see. Let me explain something about toasting. See, yeah. you do the toast, you clink the glasses to fulfill and the, then you don't, then you the sound. Don't... Right. The, you know, that's the sound. But yeah. then you have to take a sip I see. for taste. <laughs> That's good news. It's going to be a good night. Is this the oldest one? May the road rise yes. to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. Mm -hmm. May the sunshine warm upon your face. May the rains fall soft upon your field. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand. Yes. That's very nice. All right. Well, wait a minute. What? Just a drink. May you be in heaven a half hour before the devil knows you're dead. Right. I love that one. Right. That's one of my favorites. <clears throat> health, health and life to you, the woman of your choice to you, land without rent to you, and death and Aaron. That's a good one. I don't know that one. Oh. Really. May time never turn your head gray. You got it. May you seven be, may you seven, maybe you. <laughs> may you be seven times better off a year from now. I don't think we have to do that. Do we have to do this every time? Sure. Oh, <laughs> That's a good toast for you. What? That last one. What that? May you be, may you be seven times better off than a year from now. Yeah, with your new contract and everything. Oh, sure. Thank you very much. <laughs> may the rocks in your field turn to gold. Have you ever heard of that one? Nope. Well, you just heard it. <laughs> Those are some of the more <laughs> familiar slogans. <laughs> starting to do, oh, I'm beer. starting to do Foster Brooks here. We found some other toasts. I don't know whether these have been published or not. May you find your car's power window button when you've got to toss your mulligan stew. <laughs> May the tiny green person in your garden be a leprechaun and not Michael J. Fox with food poisoning. <laughs> May the girl you dated in January not announce that she's about to become a Mother McCree. Did you know that? <laughs> Good beer. May the Irish mist <laughs> rising up from the bogs never get so cold that your shillelagh shrivels. <laughs> I'll drink of that. 
This is kind of sweet. May God hold you in the palm of his hand, but not do push-ups while you're in there. <laughs> Ooh. Is this regular stuff? It sounds, tastes very strong. May you not drink so much green beer that you create your own Lake of Killarney. <laughs> I guess that's enough. I drink right. that. Anyway, happy St. Patrick's, Patrick's Day. Patrick's Day. Patrick's Day. Very good. Good. I guess it's good. What do they do to make this green? Is oh, it just food coloring is all? Yeah. Coloring in the regular beer. No, no, nobody makes green beer, do they? No. Food coloring. Yeah. Food coloring. You ever drink English stout? Yes. You know, they don't, they don't like ice and cold, no, cold, cold beer. Room temperature. Room temperature, and they Ooh. have stout over there. This mm. is about as dark as yeah. this, and it will really make your head <laughs> swivel a couple of times. <laughs> Tim Conway is here tonight, Harry Anderson, and we'll be back. Myself, but there is one. Apparently, there is a green beer. This is um, Green Rooster. Yeah, do you see the sub slogan there? Uh, green Rooster, malt liquor. No, right here. I didn't see it. It says, lean, green, and mean. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a green beer. <laughs> anyway, uh, my first guest tonight, uh, you, you, you have not met yet, and you're going to meet him in just a second. But as you probably know, the game of basketball is pretty much designated for what you call, what, very tall players. Yes. Most of them, six, eight, six, ten, yeah. seven feet. There was one exception. Spud Webb yeah. was on the show. I think it's about 5'7". And uh, we have another player here tonight in the NBA that's actually even shorter than Spud Webb. Oh. And we've asked him to come to the show tonight to talk to him and see the kind of problems that a short basketball player has to contend with. So here from the Los Angeles Lakers is our outstanding forward, Dunk Dorf. <laughs> How you doing? Good to see you. Welcome, uh, welcome to the show, Dunk. Thank you very much. Good to see you there, boy. I think the question that must be on everybody's mind, and certainly on mine, how did you ever select basketball as a as a profession? Well, Johnny, I actually didn't start as a basketball player. <clears throat> now, basically, I was a cheerleader for the Lakers. I didn't know that. That's right. I'm probably uh, most famous for starting that cheer, swing him to the left, swing him to the right, sit down, stand up, fight, fight, fight. You probably remember that one. I don't remember seeing that at all. Don't remember that at the game? You said, well, you used to go like this. You swing him to the left. Swing him to the right. Sit down. Stand up. Fight, fight, fight. Swing him to the left. Swing him to the right. Lakers, right? oh, yeah. Lakers. Yeah, I also started the actual the Lakers spell out the letter thing. That was the old chant, the locomotive used to give it that one. You remember that one that was a, give me an L. Give me an A. Give me a K. Give me an E. Give me an R. Well, I, give me an S. Okay. Lakers. Okay, I, that was good stuff. Okay, I do remember that. <laughs> now, Doug, yeah, I remember that. Now, Doug, I... I notice a red where you scored about 20 points a game. That's right. That's amazing. How, how can you possibly score 20 points a game? Basically, most of my points are scored from the foul line. Uh, John, what I do is I wait until the other team gets the ball. Right. Then I just run down to the other. <laughs> then I set up my position like this. Right. And then, uh, they just run into me. But I can like this. <laughs> and then I put in this. Um... Yeah. Well, that's, that's intriguing. Right. But do you ever actually get to handle the ball during the game? I do. Once in a while, they'll get it to me. I'm pretty doggone the good, the ball handler. You know, I'm short. But once they get it to me, I got it. It's hard to Oh, that, no, that's that's amazing. Amazing. Thank you very much. Well, I guess... <laughs> I would imagine, I guess at your height, you actually, you actually see a different game than the other players. Johnny, at my height, I not only see a different game, I smell a different game. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
I don't, I don't understand what you mean. Well, I'm dealing uh, mostly in shoes and socks. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, I see what that means. See, so, uh, beginning of the season, it's not too bad, but as that season goes on, we're talking a waffle. You know? <laughs> By the time I get to the finals, I could take the enamel right, right off, off your, your breath. Huh? I like that. Right, sir. Now, here's something I really don't understand at all. I understand, uh, Dunk, that you can actually slam dunk a basketball? That's right. That's How right. can that uh, humanly be possible? Well, I have a little assistance that I have to... If you just sure. hold on to that, you sure. I got, this is a little special piece of equipment that they allow me to use in the NBA, you see. I didn't know. What that. I do is carry this little box out with me to the thing, and I just try to get up on the tit like that. <laughs> kind of balance like that. And then um, <clears throat> so I can maneuver it pretty good around the course like that. And I can uh, guard it as they come down the old field like that. They let you do it. They let me do that. Right. So, then once I get down there, I'll set myself up. Yeah. And if you just catch sure. me that ball, sure. and then I just get it like that. That's absolutely amazing. Right. Doug, I thank you for being here and give me a high five. Can you give me a high five? I can't give you a high, I can give you a low one. Doug <laughs> <laughs> Dork, ladies and gentlemen. I'm the finest, And we'll be back. friend Tim Conway, who you just met, this is Alter Eagle, has a video cassette. It's going to be available in May. So look at, look at the cup when you see this. It's a spoof about golf lesson called Dorf, Dorf on Golf. <laughs> Tim Conway. Wise guy, you said do a basketball player, remember? We yes, were at right. uh, Harvey's birthday party, and uh, you're the one who said that I think this will work, so it's all your fault. Well, you came on here one night, you did a weightlifter mm -hmm. as Mr. Dorf. Right. And then you did a jockey. Right. Uh, an elf. An elf. This has become my life. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and we were at Harvey Corman's birthday party, and I said, you know, I think it might be funny if you come in and play... A basketball, a basketball player. player in the NBA. Well, see how wrong you were. Well, I, I thought it was good. What do you know about comedy? I thought, no, I it was, thought yeah, was thank funny. you very much. See, uh, boy, golly. I'll come up with these things. Well, yeah, hang around. How'd you come up with a character? Now, you know, I never saw you do this character on the Carol Burnett show. Uh, no, that's true. Um, I, I guess I had a show of my own, and Harvey uh, did it one with me one time when, when it was a takeoff on Fantasy Island, and I was... Uh, Boss, the plane! And uh, from that, uh, then this golf thing that we did, uh, I went out and buried myself all over a golf course, which was a lot of fun. Uh, actually, the tractors were running over me and everything. It was a wonderful time. So you actually had to go out and dig little... Yeah, dig little holes. Now, the golf course did not know that. See. <laughs> we just said, we're coming out to shoot a little thing, and then we That's dug uh, holes in the golf. They're still out there on the green going, boy, I don't know. <laughs> It's a funny character. Thank you. It's thank funny. You. Thank you. Well, thank you for allowing me to do it. You're a wonderful person, and don't let anybody tell you. <laughs> As you mentioned, last time we saw each other, it was at the Harvey Corman's birthday party. I guess he'd be 60 years old. It was very, announced publicly, very traumatic, so we can, yeah. traumatic for him. Yeah, and you've known uh, him for a long time, longer than I have. Right, and it was a beautiful party. As you know, uh, all its friends were there. Which was 11, wasn't it? That we had actually counted. No, he, he invited... A lot of relatives. Yeah, lot of relatives. Uh, I guess a friend a year or something like that. So there were, uh, yeah, a lot of relatives, as I recall. Uh, 60 people there, and it was, a, it was a marvelous party. Spent a lot of money on it. Uh, I was really surprised to know that Sears made wine. But I feel... <laughs> Let me get one that has a twist top on it. I yeah, you know that, and the date on it was Tuesday, which I thought was, at least it was fresh. You know, that's important. Are you, yeah. saying, are you saying here publicly that Harvey is penurious? Uh, not only that, but he's cheap. Cheap, cheap, <laughs> cheap. Parsimonious, too. Yeah, we did a, co a commercial in New York, so we went in together, and that was a time that the uh, air fair were at war and everything, so he said, I think we should take, uh, you know, get on a cheaper flight to go in, and I said, you know, let's go on a real American Airlines or something, and uh, he said no, that he felt that we could, uh, so we went uh, a Econoline, 
Uh, Econo line? We flew from Los Angeles to New York nonstop for $3, which <laughs> was amazing. Uh, they gave you, uh, when you went there, you got a uh, boarding pass and a folding chair. Which is, you know, you just, <laughs> wherever you uh, want to sit on the plane, uh, there was no entertainment on the plane. There was a high school play, though there was, it was very nice. And uh, we taxied from Los Angeles to Dallas. To Dallas. <laughs> Econo line. I think when you see a pilot in the cockpit going, get out. Of You've got problems up front. No and uh, I noticed a lot of things on the plane. You know, when they give you the instructions on the plane yeah. that uh, if uh, if the oxygen in the cabin happens to decrease, that you do you breathe normally. Have put the thing over your face and ma uh, mouth. Continue and you breathing. Just normal. continue breathing normally. Now, can you imagine? And you go. Well, we're dropping about 10,000 feet a second here. I better breathe normal. Yeah. I, uh, we're going to hit that mountain soon, I would imagine. And, uh... <laughs> Honey, did you lock that door before we left? <laughs> So we had a delightful flight. Yeah. Econo line, huh? Yeah, very nice. Very nice line. Is that about wrap up the material on a Econo No, that'll, I get a little more. But, uh... <laughs> I don't fool around. Yeah, I know. Boy, this is good stuff. Can tell, I, me oh, what you, tell me what you think of this, really. I don't know. We're not plugging Which one in. is yours and which one is it? We're not. Doesn't make any difference. Ed, you okay? Right, I mean, you're all right, aren't we're you? Not, you know right. what I mean? <laughs> we're not plugging any brand. No, I understand. It's not a beer plug. This it horse is great. never going to race again. I don't care what you say. <laughs> <laughs> Had to get it in. Oh, yeah. Well, sure. Sure. I mean, way down you know That's yeah. right. You got to score when you can. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that bad? Uh, that, <laughs> no, you know that. Well, first of all, it tastes just like beer. But it tastes well, it pretty is. good, it's doesn't good. it? Yeah, very, good. very nice. I yeah. guess food coloring is uh, more or less tasteless. It's I would nice. imagine so. I would certainly hope so. What else is new in your life? Anything happening? Oh, uh, that's it. Outside how, of your, the... how are your folks? So we talked about your folks. They're not... From show business at all? Uh, no. Uh, my father was, uh, my, well, my dad was Irish, so, uh, right. you know, yeah. Good day so, for you. Uh, he's up there somewhere. Good uh, <clears throat> which actually, he's on the second floor of NBC. I mean, he's not, you know. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> it's not like he's gone altogether, you know. No, he is. And uh, he's probably up there with uh, an Irish harp or something uh, this very day. So, he is from Ireland, so he's a true Irish guy. Uh, my mother is from Romania. No, you know, every time I say that, now notice the applause that comes. My mother says... Everybody just kind of... Yeah. Well, you know why? They're waiting for a joke. Oh, really? You said my brother's from Romania. Romania is a and joke, I think, Rome. perhaps. Uh, no, my mother says, always, why don't you mention that you're from Romania? And look at I said Romanian. Uh, oh! It's a fine country. Yes, it is. Did you ever, did you ever go back and, and look into your genealogy? Do you ever have any interest doing that? Uh, no. Um, oh, okay. I have no relatives, which is great, outside what do you mean of, you have uh, no relatives? well, I have no relatives. I have a mother, and that's it. I mean, I, I had a mother and a father, but I mean, uh, and now all I have is a mother. Well, how about aunts? No, I have no aunts. No aunts, uncles? Good. Oh, I have, a, I have an aunt, yeah, over in Romania, yeah, which I've never seen. Well, why don't you, why don't you go see her? I suppose I should, yeah. And who? Do you know her name? I don't know, I don't, uh, what time is it? I could get over there. Yeah, but that's the only relative. And who, I have. you know? I don't even know, aunt uh, Sturgatsky, BK Propanto or something, I have no idea. <laughs> Uh, never well, met that's her. that's kind of sad. I'm sorry Isn't it, though? That. Yeah. No relatives. Well. Cousins? No, well, I was... I am an only child, and, and this is the truth. When I call my mother, I say, hello, Mom, and she says, who is this? Now, wouldn't you think... <laughs> she could narrow it down Being to an only, only child, that she could narrow it down to me. Yeah. <laughs> Did you uh, miss brothers and sisters growing up? I don't want to get too heavy here, but... I don't we think so, because I never way, had so them. Really... Yeah, yeah. I, um, I rented a couple, but, uh... <laughs> Basically, they were uh, uh, very nice. So on the Sakana line, we... They, are, uh, no, uh, <laughs> they always say it, it's, uh, it's lonely to be an only child. I'm just, but you probably didn't notice the difference, right? No, it was lonely being a, an only child. I can say that honestly, yeah. But, well, my parents would move, you know, without telling me, of course. Of course. And then, <laughs> so you come home and go, I wonder where they are today. Um, they gave me everything, though, which yeah. was, uh, now that I look back, nothing. Uh, <laughs> at the time, it seemed like a lot to them. Yeah, you know, but uh, they. Um, well, we got to get you some relatives. That's it. We should. We, we should, should rent have. a relative or something. I wonder if there's a there place Kelly there. girls. Or, you know, rent a car. Rent a relative. Why don't we just get a Kelly girl for me instead of a relative? <laughs> yeah. That would be good. Yeah. I never thought. Of, I don't have anybody to write to, and uh, on uh, Saint uh, Cousins Day, I don't have anything, oh. or Saint Aunt's Day, or Saint uh, Brother's Day, or anything. I'm, I'm very. I am very lonely. Yeah. <laughs> Jerry, occurred to me today, 
I don't think there was a saint named Al. I don't know why that occurred to me. Just There's a saint Christopher, saint Joseph. Do you know that there is a saint Copacabana? That's the truth. And I forgot what he is the saint of. But there was a St. Copacabana, because we were playing the other night a game, and there was a St. Copacabana. Maybe he's the uh, St. of Maracas or Did something. You know? but, uh, oh, I have no, there is a St. Copacabana. Well, you know all about that <laughs> stuff. You've been religious. Did you go? Do you still go to confession and things like that? Are you still? Well, there's the not a side? priest alive that has that kind of time. I know. <laughs> <laughs> you're talking about, yeah. You're talking about major telephones. <laughs> You know, Priest brings his lunch into the confession. That's right. <laughs> It'll be a yeah. long day here. <laughs> uh, we'll take a break. We're coming right back. Harry Anderson. And they have relatives. As you know, he is one of the stars of NBC's Night Court, which is moving to a new day and time. And it's going to be seen tomorrow night and thereafter every Wednesday at 9 o'clock. And uh, Harry is also one of the best. He started, actually, as a street performer, one of the best comedy magicians around. And he's going to be at the Arlington Theater in Santa Barbara the 28th of March. Would you welcome Harry Anderson? <laughs> I got one. You got one, huh? Little here's, green beer? Here's to you. Here's toward you. I hadn't have met you. Wouldn't have ignored you. <laughs> How you doing? Oh, that was good. Good to see you. Good to see you. We'll, we'll talk about this stuff in a minute. People yeah. wonder about this. We know what it is, but... Anyway, are you in the Irish, Anderson? Anderson? No, Swedish? I'm Swedish. I'm Swedish. Yeah, we, uh, yeah we raped Scotland. I think we couldn't find Ireland. Yeah. Do yeah. <laughs> you speak any Swedish? You no, more, I don't. You dog. Huh? You morty dog. I think that means how are you? I knew that I know that. My head has three corners. I don't know why I know that. <laughs> Is that easy to work into a conversation? Uh, well, I just did. Yeah, you did, of course. <laughs> how you been? Now, what are we what are we gonna talk about here? I know what I know what this stuff is. I mentioned you were a street performer. Yeah. Uh, most people probably knew that who saw you in the early days of television because you did a lot of uh, stand-up and uh, the scam flim-flam stuff on stage. I saw you a lot at the comedy improv doing some wonderful stuff with the the nail through the, the old needle through the, the arm. The needle through yeah. the arm. And people At would the dinner show. People yeah. would scream, actually scream. Geek you, magic. That's what? Geek, well, last time <laughs> I was geek on. Magic. Last time I was on, we talked about how much fun it was as kids ordering yeah. from magic catalogs. And you mentioned Abbott's Magic Company of Colon, Michigan. That's, That's right. really a place. It's <laughs> a bigger place than I thought. So I brought you. <laughs> I brought you uh, Abbott's Catalog Number 6 well. from Abbott's Magic Novelty Company. This is for bedside reading, but before I give it to you, I was reading it, and I found... This has all the great magic in the world. I mean, all of it. For those of you who have never done magic, this was like a Bible for oh. kids, kids growing up. If we didn't have that, it was the National Magic Company or Abbott Magic or Chicago Magic. Right, right. And, uh, but Abbott's at the time, when I was a kid, was the big one. Mm -hmm. And I mean, this, is, this one is from 1940. You can buy Cutting a Lady in Half for $85. Uh, lady not included. But you can also, yeah, yeah but you can also buy Pickled. Just right for all occasions, close-up, platform, or stage. Magician uses borrowed handkerchiefs from the spectators. He displays a banana and covers it with one handkerchief. The magician then displays a large cucumber pickle. He covers this with a second handkerchief. Nothing could be fairer. And to the audience, there is no doubt in their minds as to which hand covers the pickle and which covers the banana. And yet, at the magician's command, the pickle changes to the banana, and the banana changes to the pickle. It mystifies, it entertains, and it comes complete with pickle and banana, and special patter, price, we pay the postage, one dollar. One buck. <laughs> Believe that. That's for you. Well, thanks, that's good, you know. And then I got something else, because we talked about how... Did you remember, I remember so much sending away for stuff like this. I would go out and, and earn a dollar a quarter, or get an allowance, take it, sit down, and write a letter, trying to pretend I was older. 
Oh, yeah. You know, but like I was a magician, and my sister, Catherine, would type the letter. I'd say, dear son, I was like 13. And please send me... I, I don't think I fooled them, because I would send them a dollar and a quarter, saying, please send me one silk, you know, so forth, yours truly, the great Carsoni. <laughs> and my I'd sister... For that and, and go out to the mailbox and set up a tent and wait... For the mailman to come. There's something like oh, mailing, yeah. getting something mail order was fantastic. Okay, well, this was the other thing. This oh, is, is this? we talked about how you would send away for something and and you'd, and it would say, uh, no rehearsal necessary, <laughs> works itself, mm -hmm. and you'd get something that, that you couldn't do if you were 105. Well, when I was a kid, I saw these again, so I picked them up. When I was a kid, in the spook magic section, mm -hmm. they had terror eyes. Terror eyes. Terror eyes with... Terror eyes. This is uh -huh. Halloween magic. You were gonna scare your friends, and for a buck, this you want to try these on? That's what these you These are probably coming around again, aren't they? For one dollar, and you'd put these on. Mm -hmm. That's pretty spooky, huh? That's what you would get. I can't see what it, I can't see what I can't see what you it looks look like. You look good. You look good. Thank you. Yeah. That's so for there a buck, you go. Huh? Those are memories. For you. Is that what you started as? I mean, doing the the magic, and then it went into the comedy. Well, I started magic, and then I got out on the street and realized that I could make more money hustling with the shell game. Right. And so I hustled till I got my jaw broken, and then I sat around with my mouth wired shut for six weeks and figured out maybe linking rings were safer. Right. And went back to the magic, and on the street, comedy was a great tool. It you did the three-shell game, three-card Monty and all those kind of... The shell game. Yeah. I didn't learn the Monty really till later, but right. I didn't. I was a pretty good shell worker in my day. And you actually did that on the streets? Sure did. Spent three days in the drunk tank in New Orleans once during Mardi Gras for doing it. No kidding? Yeah. Yeah, you brought no, what thing. we call the jumbo cards also. Jumbo cards? Yeah. Oh, I brought a trick. Yeah, you want to yeah. see a trick? Sure. Okay. Well, these are... Sure, you don't play solitaire in a phone booth with these, but... <laughs> remember, so my first, I remember the first deck that I thought that was dynamite. Yeah, well, this is, this is a trick I learned as a kid. The cards weren't this big, but I want you to remember it as I remember it. Okay. So this is a memory trick. This memory is where trick. I memorize a deck of cards, even though I shuffled them just before I came out because I knew we might not have time for me to shuffle them out here. So I, <laughs> I will memorize these cards, the order of the cards. Just speak amongst yourselves for a moment here. Uh, I got him. All right. Okay. Now, you will name any card, and I will remember where that card was, and I will find it, because I memorized them even though I shuffled them backstage. In other words, whatever I say, <clears throat> you will know where it is without even looking at it. Yeah, but if you say everything I say, then it takes twice as long to finish the trick. <laughs> Certainly. 